Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Wednesday of the second week of Lent. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside by themselves and said to them on the way, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death, and hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and scourged and crucified, and he will be raised on the third day. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee approached him with her sons and did him homage, wishing to ask him for something. He said to her, What do you wish? She answered him, Command that these two sons of mine one uh, sit, one on your right and the other at your left, in your kingdom. Jesus said in reply, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup that I am going to drink? They said to him, We can. He replied, My cup you will indeed drink. But to sit at my right and at my left, this is not mine to give, but is for those for whom it has been prepared by my Father. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus summoned them and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, Whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. Just so the Son of Man did not come to be served but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, this particular Gospel reading has two very distinct sections. And it really brings about this contrast uh, that the disciples are living out. At one point here in the beginning, we see that Jesus is preparing them for what is about to happen. They're just about ready to enter into Jerusalem, that final week of Jesus' life. He knows that this is going to be the culmination of his entire ministry on earth, and soon things will be over as far as that ministry portion is concerned. And so he gives them this third prediction. It's a very specific and detailed one that he is going to be handed over. He's going to be mocked, which he was. He's going to be scourged, which he was, and crucified, which he was. And he would also raise on the third day, something that always they brought them to a point of wonder. What in the world did he mean by that? So here you have this prediction of what is about to happen. And they are going to be coming into the city of Jerusalem, and things are going to take on this uh, very specific trajectory, one that is different from what people thought about when they thought about the Messiah. The Messiah was going to come not to be a victim, but to be a victor. uh, The Messiah would come and trounce the enemies of Israel and bring order and government again back to the uh, Israelites. But here, he is saying he is going to be tragically victimized. He's going to be scourged, which is a horrible form of torture. He's going to be crucified which is, again, the cruelest form of execution that the Romans had. But again, he brought them hope, you know, that he would be raised on the last day, which again brought them to the point of scratching their heads. But then, in contrast to what had just been spoken, here comes the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee. And in comes mom with a different kind of request. She's probably still thinking about the victorious Messiah, the one as they enter into Jerusalem is going to topple the government's uh, possession of the uh, Jewish people when talking about Rome. It's going to bring about a new 
uh, new, fresh, wonderful springtime for, for the Jewish people. And as he comes into this great new government that he's going to establish, she wants to be sure that her sons have the top billing, that they are there at his right and at his left. Again, uh, she's doing what a lot of mothers would do, and that is just kind of encourage uh, the promotion of her sons. But she does it in such a bold and careless way. And Jesus does not even really respond to her. She asks the question, but then Jesus turns to the two and he says, you do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup that I'm going to drink? He wanted them to be the ones that actually are standing up for what this request is all about. Well, they hastily said, yes, we can. And then he confirms that they will. They will, in fact, drink that drink. Now, again, He's referring to this mocking, this scourging, and this crucifixion. And um, he does affirm the fact that, yes, you too are going to go through your own time of suffering. But again, prominence in the kingdom of God is not for me to determine. And it's already been prepared by my father. Again, the father looking upon the hearts. And if there ever was a time that James and John slipped back in terms of where they really could have been, you may remember that along with Peter and uh, Andrew, James and John were always among the key apostles. And even if Andrew wasn't there, James and John were along with Peter. So really what we see here is mom wanting them to kind of leapfrog ahead of Peter. But as Jesus said, not only is that not what is going to be prepared, but you're missing the point of how I am leading and what my leadership is all about. That I didn't come to be served. I didn't come to be a king on a high throne that would have people just serving on him day and night. I came to be the servant, a servant leader a servant king. And not only that, I came to give up my life. I'm going to die for those people. That's the kind of leaders that I need. I need a leader who is willing to say yes when I invite them to come and die. What a powerful, powerful thing. And you know, I, I whenever I think of this passage, I think this has got to be a great comfort for Anyone who uh, is leading a church, a pastor, or if you're leading a committee in the church or anything like that, that Jesus had to fight ambition even among his 12 apostles. And in fact, <clears throat> when they were found out, the other 10 were really furious. So now he had a lot of infighting, a lot of disunity going on. And so he had to bring them back to the focus that uh, they were indignant and I guess partly because of the ambition of the two, but also because maybe deep in their hearts, they're hoping that they would have prominence as well. And again, Jesus wanted to remind them, whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. That's a principle of leadership. That's a principle of the Christian life, that we all are called to serve one another. So when I ask the question, what, what about me? What's in it for me? Uh, which is a big, the, in uh, sales, they call that the WIFM question. What's in it for me? That you have to answer that question when you're selling something. Well, Jesus isn't selling anything. He's challenging them and inviting them to give up their lives. He's inviting them to be a part of a group of servant leaders who will give themselves up, both in terms of perhaps death, but if not, at least in terms of service. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, this scripture is a beautiful scripture for us to look at during Lent. <clears throat> and here, during this season, what we really turn to is the whole issue of ambition, the issue of selfishness, and the issue of service. 
are we the kind of people who give themselves for others? Are we the kind of people who serve others, who want to help others, or are we a part of that WIFM group that always is looking for what's in it for me? A key question to ask during Lent, am I a servant? Am I willing to give myself for others? Or am I too consumed with ambition, too consumed with getting credit, too consumed with those things? And these are harsh things for us to think about, but good things for us to think about, because those other things can easily creep in. That sense of, well, I need to be at this point of prominence. I need to be at this point of success. And basically, Jesus says, have you given yourselves for others? Have you been a servant to the others in the church? Have you helped other people? A great thing for us to look at, not only in almsgiving, but also in giving ourselves for the lives of any who desire to have a friendship that is one who desires to serve them, help them, encourage them, strengthen them, and befriend them. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.